Hey everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to an inbox review. Today we're going to review of the brand new Revel 132 ME262 B1 slash U1 Knife Fighter. So this is a brand spanking new kit, just released probably a few weeks ago. Um, when I first saw it released, I knew I was going to buy it, and as soon as it was available, I bought one. Um, big fan of the 262, and the newer Revel kits are renowned for being pretty decent kits. So I think I paid £34 from Hannon's for it, and for that I thought it's worth a it's worth a punt on for sure. I've got the trumpeter single seater version, and I think it's the A1 I've got. Uh just get the twin seater knife fighter variant in the stash. It's excellent. So let's go across and let's have a look at this brand new Revel kit. Okay, so there we go. Typical Revel box as you can see, side opening, which is a bit of a pain. Uh for those who've got a few of these in the stash will know. You start piling them up, put kits on tops. The box compresses, the end pops open, and um, before you know it, you're going to absolutely destroy box, possibly damage parts, and it is a bit of a nightmare. So it's a real shame. Revel really needs to listen to the customers and change this box design. Other than that, the new style boxes are nice. It's a level five, so it's a bit more of a complex kit. Uh, the box art's really nice. You've got a 262, some searchlights, and what looks to be, it looks like a mosquito uh, on its way, uh, plummeting to earth, unfortunately. So, very, very nice box art. The striking um, squiggle pattern on the 262 looks really, really good. The antenna and the drop tanks as well. Very, very cool. Uh, we've got the same picture on the side, as you can see. And that side, we've got a little bit of information uh, over on this side. So, it's uh, 222 parts, 33.6 centimeters uh, long, and 39.1 centimeters wide i think that's correct yes it must be uh it's kit number 04995 and like i say it's a level five kit so it's one of those slightly more complex kits and that's it on the back we have the uh color call ads some pictures of a completed model and it does look particularly good it really really does look good um it does give you a bit of information about the aircraft on the back which will show you the other camera in a minute and it gives you all the paint numbers as well. Typical Revel doesn't give you the colour, just gives you the number, which drives me round the bend. Um, Revel paints are actually very good, especially thinner or thinner. Uh, they do work very well. Uh, I just wish Revel would give the actual colour a call out so you can actually match it. So if it's RLM, you can see, we're going to have to go and look at the actual um, conversion yourself. I'll read the back out. So it's a model construction kit of the ME262. The first jet powered aircraft of the Second World War. The ME262 was converted into a two seater knife fighter in order to combat attacking Allied bombers. I chose to load flaps, replica Jumo 004 engines, movable ailerons and rudder, radar antennae, uh, machine guns, detailed cockpit with side consoles, uh, detailed cockpit well in the undercarriage bay, detailed undercarriage, two auxiliary fuel tanks, D and decal separate two German Luftwaffe versions. Bear in mind, you're not going to get swastikas, stickers, so if you want those, uh, you will have to order them separately. And it's not the big old conspiracy. Oh, they should be there, they should be there. For Revel, it is literally law. They cannot display the swastika sticker or include it in Germany. Uh, and that's it. If you don't like it, don't buy the kit, but it's a case in point. Some manufacturers do it because uh, they want to appeal to a wider market. Some allow a little corner where they can be cut off for customs. Uh, it's just it's one of those things. It's against the law to display the symbol, so some countries don't allow it. And with Revel being a German company, they don't display it or supply it. You can pick up a whole sheet of swastikas in every scale for about eight pounds from Hannon's in the last few years. They really well, so it's not the end of the world. So let's start unboxing it and have a look and see what we've got. Now I have opened this up before and had a little look inside. It's not one big bag, which is good, um, as Revel usually does. There is actually uh, separate bags. So we've got instructions. These are the newest style instructions that I've actually not used yet. Uh, I've had a very quick look, and they look very, very good. So have a look at those in a minute. We've got several sprues. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sprues, including the clear parts. So what we'll do is we'll start opening them up, we'll go to the other cameras and have a look at what we got. Right, so let's start with the main fuselage halves and the wing sections as well. So we'll pick, are these identical, just reversed? 
let's have a little look you see they are not no they're not identical so we go for one at a time so you got light gray whitish styrene the panel lines on trench light which is really really nice to see detail isn't bad there's a couple of sink marks here and there there are a few flaws in the plastic but it's to be expected um, not it's a bad thing it's just a cheaper end of the market so the plastic isn't going to be as high quality but the surface detail is pretty good there's no ejector pins where there shouldn't be on these parts I'm guaranteed there will be somewhere uh, inside all nice and clean a little bit of sidewall detail on the copper we'll come in a minute and have a look at that so yeah we've got upper and lower surfaces of the wings we've got the tail rudder leading edge slats part of the elevators so interior parts and the starboard side of the fuselage so if we have a little closer look we'll go all around this so start with the fuselage you can see nicely recessed panel lines they're not too big even the access panel is not too bad at all all the way through you can see a typical kind of marble you get on the some of the plastics very good all the way along, it's nice clean plastic like I said those panel lines aren't trench like now the trumpeter kit is absolutely covered in rivets um, if you want to you could re-rivet this, it wouldn't take you all that long, it's a nice big working surface area to get to pretty flat, there's the wing sections again access panels nicely depicted riveting's good obviously you've got the Sections for the leading edge slats, the flaps and ailerons at the back, very good. Very small parts. We got parts of an elevator there. I'm assuming that's the under part of the wing, which it is. Again, a fi nice finely recessed panel line. That part of the rudder. Some material parts there. Not bad at all, fairly well detailed actually. Uh, another part of the aileron, uh, sorry, elevator, and a few other various bits and bobs. I'm sure a part of the wing control surfaces. Not just sure what, but they are. It's a nice clean screw there, no problem at all. The other side, we've got the port side of the fuselage and um, wings, and again, all the same parts, bar I would say that that and that everything else is pretty much mirrored uh, we've got a couple of different parts on the bottom here at this side again very nice recessed detail it's not too heavy like i say should you want to reset uh rivet it you could go ahead no problem at all very nice this actually looks to be good quality plastic actually got a bit of flash on the sprue itself but that's not to be concerned about right the way through so on, same part as before. Very nice. Couple of different parts there. So we've got looks like some sort of switch gear and a tank. I'm not hundred sure what it is. And again, the back row of parts, same as so again, another nice clean sprue. Uh, this one we got engine, the cells, the lower half of the wing, and some cockpit parts for the look of it. So we'll start off with the big sprue. And let's see what we've got in there. So, we've got the lower section of the uh, landing gear, uh, landing gear with the wing roots, sorry, uh, with the landing gear incorporated in it. Got a little bit of flash inside, but it's easily removable. We've got a wing spar just there, more control surfaces, another spar, and the engine nacelles there. Uh, again, these all carry that nicely recessed detail work. And some raised rivets in the centre section there. Very good. Got a few sink marks here and there on uh, the back part, like the. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a sink mark just there. But I think you'd probably pick this up for thirty pounds if you shop around. I actually can't hunch that number I paid. Uh, I'll pop it up on the screen. I'll pop it up now so you can see quickly. 
and I'll pop her up at the beginning as well. So yeah, again, no problems there at all. We go around all the parts, you can have a look. We'll start at the bottom. So we've got an instrument panel. We turn it around for you to see. It's actually not that bad. Um, I've got some uh, scale individual dials there. They look lovely in there. Uh, we'll have a look at what the kit supplies in a little bit. We've got that wings, well, a machine with a wing spar just there. Again, hollowed out. Very nice. We've got the lower wing root wheelbase section there with its slightly raised rivet detail and recessed detail there. Very nice. All the way through. Very cool. More parts, another spar, and the engine nacelles as well. So again, a finely recessed detail, a bit of whiting out there, sorry. And the same for that side too. So this can be quite a troublesome part on 262s. Um, I've had problems on the, uh, the Hobby Boss kit. It's one of the main flaws on that, is getting those to fit. Uh, so hopefully these won't prove too, too troublesome. Um, it's quite a lot to do. You've got to assemble these halves and then get it all to fit on the wing. So there's quite a lot to put in there. So care is definitely needed when assembling that. We have some copy parts, antenna or bulkhead with some real nasty, is that supposed to be there or did you cut that off? Hoping you cut that off because some nasty flash. We've got the nose cone and a few other bits and bobs just knowing you pretend to know what they are. So we'll just go around and have a look at them all. So you can see all the detail. Again, some nicely recessed and raised panel work. Look at there's the top part of the cockpit. A few controls for the cockpit, so on and so forth. And this bit, which I'm assuming you snip out because the flash on that is terrible. But I'm assuming uh, that is snipped out to move it. There you go, there's the one. Uh, let's go with the last big sprue. So on here. We have gun covers, the big sprue, and it just fits in, so we'll plonk it there. Got the gun cowlins for the front, underneath, the bulkhead, uh, various other parts. We've got some control surfaces, some control levers, landing gear, plenty of bulkhead parts, and landing gear covers. Now, okay. So, we've got the landing gear covers there, all in one piece. Uh, did they give you in halves or do you have to cut that? We'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, and just have a little look, you see. There are two halves there, they're the same. They are, yeah, okay. Now that's a nice touch. So there you've got the whole landing air covers in one, and there they are in halves. So that's a really nice little touch. There must be another part for that. I assume it's that anyway. We'll double check in instructions. That's really good. If it is, they've really thought that out. I complain to a lot of people is they want to put their aircraft in flight. And quite often the gear bay doors don't actually fit in the fuselage. So it's quite a nice little touch if Revel's done that. Like I say, when we get to instructions, we'll confirm. We'll just have a quick scoot around all these parts because there are quite a lot. So we got... I don't know if they're wheel centres. Looks like it. Some nice thin parts there, landing gear legs, they're not too bad, add a bit of wire detail to that. Paint it up, give it a wash, that'll look quite good. Bit of bulkhead there, bit of detail on it. Nice thick sprues. More parts, another bulkhead. A few other various bits and bobs. And we've got, there we go, there's the entire gear door in its closed position so I'm hoping that will fit straight in to where it goes. If you do want to display it in flight you can cover the gear bay up and then we'll get across to the separate parts in a second. Here's the small bits and bobs, control stick, it's actually quite nice. Here are the thin bits and bobs and then we've got the gear bay doors in half so they're the upper parts, uh, so the outer parts, centre bit and there must be a flat bit somewhere as well, separate don't think it's on the sprue, we'll see if we can find it on another. And then the cowling for the nose cannons as well. Very cool. So, if that is what it is, that's a very nicely thought out part. 
we shall see. So, three sprues, got engine parts, but look at it. Whether the engines can be displayed uh, open, I have absolutely no idea at all. Um, I really don't know, but we plonk those parts in. I'm going to zoom out enough. There we go. So, so we can get, get them in. in. So, there's various components there. We've got nozzles. Um, they are literally engine components. Is there two of these? Indeed there is, there's another one there, so it's mirrored in there, we'll get rid of that one in a minute. So yeah, not too bad, it's a bit basic, um, some quite severe clean up needed in places, but for what it is, um, it's not too bad at all, to be fair. So, whether you're, like, <laughs> you're able to show these open, I don't know, I really don't know. So we get instructions, which I always do last, because I like to go in blind. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about at the best of times, to be honest. Um, we'll have a look at instructions to confirm that, but all the parts look good. There's a bit of cleanup required there, there's a little bit of flash here and there. But nothing really uh, to write home about. To be honest, we've got gun components, the cannons from the front, uh, the gears, the wheels, which are quite nice actually. Moulded in halves, as you can see. But the surface detail is nice, you're sadly going to lose a fair old bit of that by sanding them. Um, definitely one part worth adding aftermarket with resin. Uh, the trumpet stuff will fit this uh, with some slight modifications and definitely be something I'd look at doing. Uh, and also don't forget, put some nose weight in this thing because it's almost certainly going to be a tail sitter. But I shall do that. The cannons are at the top. They're not too bad. Uh, various other parts, bits and bobs, looks like landing gear parts. There's just various components on there. Is it doubled up again? Indeed it is. I think that entire other bag, yeah, that entire bag is a double. So we can literally put all that to one side uh, because it is, it's literally all a double. Quite clever how the Revel have done this. Um, they've certainly, certainly thought out their par layout. The sad thing they have done, which they're quite common at doing, is literally parts on here. There's probably what? 25 parts on there are a push and they range from part number 97, 82, 79 all the way up to 193. So you've really got to hunt around for your parts. It's not a massive amount of sprues as we saw but it is a little bit of an annoying uh, habit of Revel. Uh, most other manufacturers are continuous with their numbers so they tend to stick to one sprue and then they move on to another. Uh, this one um, it's just sprue F. I don't know if it's labelled F193. It's been a long time since I've got a Revel kit. So we'll have a look in the instructions. And the last sprue before we get to the clear parts is the auxiliary fuel tanks and the antenna for, uh, I believe it's a radar, isn't it? On the front. Now they're actually quite nicely done. Um, whether you can get a PE uh, for this, you probably can, because I think uh, Trumpy does the Night Fighter, fighter variants. But to be honest, they don't look too bad. You've got to be very, very careful um, cleaning that up that you don't snap those. But even if you did, you could repair them. Uh, not too bad at all. And the drop tanks don't look too bad in halves as usual. But these are quite easy to clean up because you've got the big seam just there. So if you're careful with your gluing, you can quite often get away uh, with no sanding on these. So there we go. There's all plastic parts. Let's have a look at the clear parts. Uh, before we move on to the decals and instructions. So, these can make and break a kit. Right. Yep, okay. Let's just have a look what we've got. So, the clarity isn't too bad. The quality isn't the best. I've got several flaws on the glass. More importantly, and I don't know if you'll see it, literally right there, there is a major flaw in the glass. Um, so much so I'll be contacting Revel for replacements. It almost looks like CA fogging. I don't know if you're going to pick it up. Try to get the light to catch it for you. 
but there is quite a major floor probably a centimeter wide and it starts just there and runs round and down so that is one part Revels customer care in the UK is actually pretty good to be fair so I'll pop them an email uh, and see about that the other part that's the rear section um, the middle section doesn't look too bad actually the quality the clarity isn't bad at all there are some flaws in there there definitely is there's like almost pitting in that one there as well but like we said this would make or break at the front screen looks to be actually much much better much higher quality can't see any real flaws on that at all very good, you've got nav lights, the gun sight, and the screen for the front as well, which mm, isn't perfect. But hey, uh, just one of those things. So a little bit disappointing about that glass part. Um, the rest of the kit's actually pretty damn good, to be fair. Uh, what it goes together like, I don't know. It is something quite like to build pretty soon, so hopefully you'll see it this year. But I'm getting, amassing a great number of kits. Uh, I really, really want to assemble like right now, so it's getting harder and harder to uh, pick the next kit to start with. Right, let's get all this stuff out of here. So we've got the instructions, and we've got some decals. We'll start with the decals. There's nothing else in there. We get a colour call out. No, nope, it's all on the back of the instructions. That's fine. So we've got the usual safety advice. Um, you know, don't gargle with petrol. Don't throw your gerbil out the window of our parachute. Yeah, random things like that. So we don't really need that. We have the decal sheets, which again can quite often be a weak point of some of these kits. Uh, like I say, no swastikas, stickers. New wouldn't be. Uh, they're literally not going to be included. And like I say, if it's something that really bothers you, go buy a different kit because you're not going to get rid of this kit. Um, right, okay, so what have we got? Well, Research and designed by Airdoc. Doesn't say who they're made by. Um, printed in Italy for Revel. Mm, okay. Doesn't say the cartograph though. They actually look really, really good, to be fair. Um, they're not overly thick. In fact, they're not thick at all. Cannot feel those. They're a nice satin finish. They're all... Just check. Absolutely perfectly in register. The colours are superb. They look to be really, really nice decals. Very, very good. What I do like is we've got a lot of decals for the cockpit. So we've got several uh, instrument panel displays. We've got some placards. That looks to be radio gear, so on and so forth. I can't confirm. We'll have a look in the instructions in a minute. But that looks to be a pretty damn nice decal sheet. We've also got the belts, which don't look that bad, actually. Um, hmm. I'm quite impressed by those decals. They look really good. Um, are they cartograph? I don't know. It says, uh, Printinity for Revel, a subsidiary of Hobby Co. Incorporated. But I assume that's talking about Revel. So they could be uh, cartographed, but they are beautiful decals. They are very, very nice. I can't see having any problems with those. If anybody's built it yet, let me know. Uh, let me know how you get on with the decals. Literally, if you start to assemble it, you'll know from the instrument panels, but they look really good. I am very impressed by those. So, top marks. Top, top marks, Rebel. Right, the instructions. Now, I've heard a lot of good things about these. Um, first off, the front. You've got a beautiful picture of the completed aircraft, which looks pretty damn cool, if you ask me. So, by the looks of it, we can have the gun compartments open, copper opens up. That looks really, really smart, actually. Very cool. So, yeah, you got enclosed safety advice, obviously, just as a disclaimer kind of thing. Um, and that's it on the front. On the back, we've got the colour cards, which you get to in a little bit. So these are brand new instructions. I've never seen uh, this type before, certainly never used them. So on the front, we got some uh, information. So this is about cutting parts off, gluing, uh, cleaning the sprues. Uh, I really don't think you need to do that in this day and age. Uh, gluing again, painting, decaling, 
so on and so forth. So there is literally tips and tricks. We've got the verse legends on that side as well. Um, quite a lot of them, and they explain what they all are. There's weight needed, drill, uh, cut, repeat, uh, illustration of assembled parts. So again, a nice feature, a whole entire page there of those. Glue, clear fixed parts, and then the required colours. So like I say, they only normally give you the actual uh, number of the colour, but it does give you the colour itself below. If you never use Revel colours, they are surprisingly good. Um, I'd used them a long time ago. Wasn't that impressed. It was mainly by the box, the bottle box thing they're in. Um, when we brought out UMP thinner, I need to test uh, every paint to get my hands on. Tried the Revel with our thinner. It sprayed absolutely flawlessly. And it's definitely a range I would like to pick up. The problem is the generic colours, I've already got them. So it'd be like a real luxury to get them. Uh, one sad thing is there's no RLM76. You've got to mix it. Um, but I wouldn't use those colours on this at this minute anyway. More colours this side. And mixing examples as well. So 95 to 1. It explains that. So yeah, all your colour call out today. you got all your sprue layouts there as well. Uh, if you need spare parts, there's the contact details, there's the email. Um, there is a UK address, which is very good. So I will contact those about the uh, clear parts, and hopefully we can get some new ones. So all the sprues are laid out there. Very nice, clear, concise, all the parts are numbered as well. So you can pick those up at a glance, as they are there as well. Right, so assembly starts with the cockpit. So, I see. So it builds up at modular. So you start off with these parts, all the legends at the top that you need, which is a very nice touch. Everything is clearly labelled. So you've got decals where they're needed, paint where it's needed, the part number and the orientation it goes as well. With it being a new type of instruction, it does take a second to get your head around what's actually being explained. But once you get looking, it actually is pretty clear. So yeah, just step-by-step -step assembly. So the cockpit actually looks like it's going to be a half-decent cockpit, to be honest, for a kit one. Um, so that was the front section. I think this is leading on to the rear now. Yeah. Got assembly of the rear cockpit, the seats, the actual tub itself, the guns, and obviously you've got to choose whether you want them open or closed. Can you do either? Let me have a look at that picture. You probably could. I think you could probably leave that off and um, leave those loose. I did that on my Hobby Boss one. And then you could detail paint all inside and just open them as you wish. Definitely something to test out in the uh, dry fitting stages if you can. So yeah, assembly of the gun bays. Obviously the options if you want to close or open. There's two separate instructions for both, which isn't a good sign. So open, open, closed. Okay, so I think you just skip all that. Right, okay. Yeah, onto the cockpit again, putting the surround in the cockpit at the bottom. Install the cockpit tub into the fuselage. Landing gear detailing, the wing spars and the roots. Again, it looks to have quite positive lock in there. There's two overlapping uh, sections there that clip together. Control surfaces. Actuators and got actuators on them as well. That's quite cool. So again, nice clear instructions. I do like these. Now I didn't see the addition of any nose weight. Is it going to tell us to pop it in the actual nose cone itself? I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere. Because if it was me, I'd put it in there. Unless I completely missed a step, I do knew. Right, we'll keep going. Um, yeah, so lean edge slats, putting the rear section in, building up the engines, they look to build up quite nice. Install them inside the cowlings, so on and so forth. Install them onto the aircraft itself, that's going to be a, definitely a test in time, that one literally. Any mention of any nose weight? Nope. Nothing yet. Run to the landing gear. 
clear enough, you just glue the halves together, give them a clamp, give them a sand. For me, I would 100% add resin wheels just to not lose any of that detail. So you've got two different types of uh, tyre tread by the look of it. Yeah. Colour call outs are very, very clear. It even shows you the distinction between the different colours. If it's black, it's black. If it's grey, it's grey. It's green, it's green. It's quite a nice inclusion in there, rather than your standard black and whites. Got the gear bay doors at the front, if you want them open or closed. Very cool. And then gear front legs, the rear. So yeah, separate part if you want them open. Very nice. On to the canopies. So, again, you need to pick if you want to close, you've got to remove these little uh, legs there to stick out, otherwise they sit in the side. To be honest, you can cut them off. I will probably cut them off, close the canopy up with some PVA as a temporary fix, and open up at the ends the way I normally do it. Uh, right, so we do have removable covers on the engines. That's pretty cool. So you can remove those if you wish to show it. We've got the front uh, gun cowl in there. Assembly of the nose cone, still no mention of any weight at all. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have a quick look at the front just to double check because I would have thought there is nose weight in there personally. And I assume it's going to show us on that legend, which for weight was kg. Add weight for improved stability. So, let's have a look at that little kg thing quick. I would 100% put weight in this. Otherwise, I think it will come back and really, really bite you in the behind later on. There we go. Sink, there it is there. 15 grams of nose weight. Right where I said I put it as well. So, yeah, you can even put lead strip. Um, whatever method you've got. I normally use uh, fishing uh, split shot with PVA. Um... So you get it in there. I'd add a little bit more than 15 grams, to be honest. Uh, I would get as much as you could in there within reason. Don't do what my buddy Ivan did and had, add half a ton of weight in the front. <laughs> uh, there we go, colour schemes now. So we've got Red 12 uh, from May 1945. So you've got your RLML, that's going to be 81 over... Give me a sec. Yeah, oh, well, I'm 81 over 82. Yeah, with the Motlin on the fuselage. Quite a nice scheme. Black engines, completely black underneath because it's a knife fighter. Then we've got, is that the same one? It is, so we've got side, top. Is it left and right? Yeah, we got left, right, top and bottom views of the uh, colour schemes, which is quite good. I do like that. And then you've got red 8 from again May 1945 which has got the black underneath the RLM uh, 82 wings the 81 engine cowlings and the twin coloured mottling effect on the top and obviously the black underneath uh, for me I think I like that one which is the actual one on the front it is that one so that's the one for me I like that scheme it's a very, very striking scheme, and it's definitely the one I would choose for sure. So there we go. This is my review of the brand new 132 Revel ME262B1U1. Uh, the Night Fighter variant, it looks to be a great kit. Um, for the money, uh, it looks good value, really, to be honest. The only problem is, if it really bothers you, the lack of riveting detail, which you can add, should you wish to. And the main one for me is the floor in the canopy. Uh, so I'll be contacting Revel's customer support and see how good they are. Um, but I think I won't have a problem with that because I've never really heard any real dramas about Revel UK. So that's the only thing. But it's going to happen. It's a cheaper kit. Uh, the instructions are great. Really, really good. The decals look to be superb. And overall, the kit itself looks to be decent quality. The boxes are a pain, uh, as anybody knows who's got them. Um, but that's just by the by. Hopefully at some point Revel will listen and will make top open boxes. So there we go. A brand new kit from Revel, Emmy 262 U1B1 132 Night Fighter. Looks to be great, gets a thumbs up from me. So if you fancy one, go and have a look. Or if you've built it, certainly comment in the chat. Or if you are building it, let me know what you think of it so far. Uh, there we go. 
So thanks for watching. As usual, go check out the forums in Sasha Scale Modeler, which is inscalemodeler.com, the Facebook page in Sasha Scale Modeler, the YouTube channel you're on now. Give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, leave a comment. I read every single comment, everything. Uh, I don't always get time to respond, but I read them all. So thank you very much if it actually takes the time to comment. Um, it's always nice to know what you guys think it really is. Uh, and obviously go check out umpretail.com as well, myself and Lee's business. And don't forget on Tuesdays and Fridays from half 7 UK, half 8 Europe and one thirty Central US, we've got the ISM live at the bench shows of myself and the live crew. So there's one tonight, Friday, and one on Tuesday. Tuesdays is build night. You usually see me building stuff. We have a bit of general chat and read the chat with you guys as well. And on a Friday, it's a proper show. We have a look at what we've been building, buying. We've got Tim's latest kit releases. Answer all your questions. And we normally have giveaways as well, which tonight is three. £30 gift vouchers from a model store in your country. Uh, this has been supplied by myself and the guys from our swear jar. So thanks a lot for the guys for their profanity. Absolutely brilliant. So make sure you tune in tonight and have a look. You just bring them up at random. Don't do, it, do anything at all. Just literally watch and follow the instructions. It's simple as that. So there we go. Hope you like the review. Please leave me any comments down below. Uh, good or bad, I'm not bothered. And, uh, let me know what you think. And I shall catch you later. Take care. Bye-bye.